All right, people, we're going to talk today about the age of flesh. And what I'm talking about here is the age that we live in right now where flesh is dominant across the globe. Now, we have to kind of recap what we went through. Uh, You know, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry. It's been a while since I put out a video, but, (laughs) man, we have been – I've been working pretty hard here the last month and um, have had very, very little time. So, uh, you know, to produce any video. So I really do appreciate your patience and, um, and, uh, well, here I am. So let's kick it off. So we're talking about the age of flesh here. Uh, and to recap what we went through last video, uh, the world that was, uh, we, we covered a, a lot of territory in that video, uh, Obviously, heaven and earth was created, and uh, I don't think people have a problem with that, no matter what background you have, right? But in Job 38, we we documented that there was a time it was complete peace and safety, or not safety, harmony, peace and harmony. In Job 38, 7, where it says, all the stars sang and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So there was really no disruption here. I personally think um, that this was, it's just my opinion, and that's all. But I personally think it was heaven on earth, okay? And uh, because it will be heaven on earth in the eternity, and I think this is before the fall of Lucifer. So, um, but then we do see, we documented in Revelation 12, uh, where there was a rebellion, in heaven well there was a rebellion anyway and there were the stars of god or the stars of heaven were cast to the earth and i believe that that is talking about children of heaven or the children of god were basically drawn away from god and and uh, brought into the ways of the world okay now so that what and why i put it that way is because it, it if it was a period where there was heaven on earth, uh, they weren't taken from heaven and cast, you know, like uh, down like me- meteor rights to, to the earth. Okay, it's not like heaven was out in space orbiting the orbiting the the globe, right? Heaven is wherever God is, and if God is on earth, heaven is on earth. Okay, now I'm not saying that God was on earth at this time or not, but I think the best way to interpret Revelation 12 there is that a third of these children were drawn away from God and introduced to the ways of the world, which is really the the modus operandi of Satan. Okay, he is, that's what... That's what he does. He's the accuser. He's the destroyer. He basically destroyed them or caused them, their souls, to, um, well, to perish, spiritually speaking. So um, anyway, there was a rebellion. We documented that. I think then at that time uh, there was a judgment, and that judgment condemned uh, Satan, the dragon, and it condemned his um, his military, fallen angels. If you want to call it a military, that's what I prefer because they were working for him, and uh, they had a mission. And um, anyway, it caused them. And you read about it in Jude six that they are essentially under lock and key at this time, um, awaiting judgment again. So there had to be some sort of judgment there that would actually that it would actually seal their fate, right? Now, with that in mind, we I personally think that there was there was a judgment that some overcame as well. And who I'm talking about would be like uh the prophets, the apostles and so forth, right? When you look at Jeremiah and God saying to Jeremiah that he knew him before he was ever formed in the belly, and this would be um Jeremiah chapter 1. And uh, he had already foreordained him to be a prophet to the world. 
Uh, well, how, how would he do that? Except that, you know, just like randomly he picked Jeremiah to do that. It just, it just didn't make sense to me, right? Except that maybe Jeremiah stood against Satan and those angels in the rebellion. So, and now, now one would think, oh, now, so now you have, uh, Jeremiah was there and so forth. Well, we've got to think, um, we got to consider that we came from somewhere. All souls, we documented this in numerous videos now that all souls come from heaven, come from the father. And, um, before they enter into the flesh and then upon death, they return to the father. And that's the order of heaven and earth. So it, yeah, I would say, yeah, Jeremiah was there and many others. And that's why they were what you would call predestinated. Okay. You read about that. Paul teaches about that in Ephesians and, and there's other places that you can pull this out of. Um, but that's another study for another time. But anyway, we had the rebellion. We have a judgment that occurred of some sort back then. I think judge, some were judged to uh, condemnation at that time, and so some were judged to uh, eternal life. And uh, then some were judged that they weren't, you know, maybe they didn't have eternal life, you know, that they had not overcome, but they weren't condemned yet, and that is what this age is for. So the third, if you look at the third of God's children, um, they are being God's children, he being our closest kin, you would have to kind of consider if um, if these were your children, what would you do? Would you want to just kill them, you know, and be done with it? Or would you want to try and pull as many of those out of worldism as you could, you know, and bring them back into your kingdom? And I believe that's why God chose uh at that back at that time I believe he chose to destroy the world and we documented that in the last video the world that was and I won't get into it right now but essentially I mean there's a lot of material there you should go over that video if you're if you're wondering what I'm talking about but I believe he destroyed it and basically commanded that all souls must come through flesh and being born innocent through woman um, and having the ch the choice of good and evil right out the gate created for them uh, to to select who they're going to follow. So this is what we're going to go into now in this study is the age of flesh that all souls must come through this must come through this um this world. And Jesus even taught about that. It was given that. All, all souls come through the flesh once and then the death. Um, anyway, that uh, be that as it may, listen, I want to open up with a prayer. So let's, uh, let's approach our Father's throne. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the study and for all that are listening right here. Lord, I ask that you allow your word to come forth and, and uh, move today. And that it not be words from my spirit, but only that from the Holy Spirit. Let your truth be revealed. Bless us all with understanding and discernment in it. And Father, bless us with wisdom to be able to deliver it to others in ways that they can understand it themselves. And subsequently deliver it to, you, deliver it to even others. So we thank you for it. We give you the praise for it in the name of your Son and our Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Jesus Christ. And we thank you. Amen. So I want to go to Genesis uh, 1 right here, and we'll pick it up right out the gate. Um, get that thing up here. I think you can see it now. And Genesis 1, 1 reads, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So, like I said, I don't think anyone's got a problem. Well, except unless the you're an atheist, you have a problem with the fact that God created the heaven and the earth. But... That, that's another issue for another time anyway. So, but uh, it's whether you are like an old earth believer or a young earth believer, you still believe God created the heaven and the earth. And it goes in into verse two, which causes a lot of dispute among Christians, uh, be, particularly between the old and the young model, young earth model people. 
Uh, but we'll read it here. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, we documented in the last video that without form and void has numerous meanings. It's just not empty, necessarily, but it can mean that it was destroyed, that it was an undistinguishable ruin. Again, check that video out if you're interested in that. And God talks about it in Jeremiah chapter 4, that he did this, and he's going to do it again. And that when when's he going to do it again? It's, it's going to be when, at the return of Christ. So when you have the wrath of God poured out, the consuming fire. Um, but in verse 3, let's move on here. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay? And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, some people will say, hey, this is the sun. The sun was created at this time, but we're going to find out today in this chapter that that is not true because the sun and the moon were not created until the day four. So uh, what kind of light is this? Well, we know that Jesus is the light of the world, and we know that the only thing present here was darkness. And Now that darkness, if you've gone through the other video, is Koshek in the Hebrew, and it does mean, uh, other than among other things, other than dark, it means uh, misery, sorrow, death, destruction, and wilderness and, or wickedness. And these are all traits of Satan. So if we if we do have a destruction here, and it was the result of this rebellion, it would make sense that what we have here is the residue of that rebellion and that judgment. We have darkness upon the face of the deep. And then we have light that was given at this time. So before anything was created in this world, we have a choice between good and evil, so to speak. Um, and I mean, that's all I could say, because that light cannot be anything other than that, from what I can tell. Um, it's not the sun and the moon, anyway. So... Anyway, um, it says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, that sounds, see, it sounds like the sun and the moon. Well, just remember that. Just remember that it was taught. Peter, or uh, Paul taught this. You are not children of the night. You are or of darkness. Those that are of, you know, of the night, they sleep in, boy, they sleep in darkness. I want to... You know what? I got to go there now. I wasn't going to go there, but let me go there. This is going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's see what it says here. It says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord's soul cometh as a thief in the night. We're, what are we talking about? The second advent and also including the whole millennium. That is the day of the Lord. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. And we know there's a thousand year period that Christ will reign along with his, I guess, his priests. Um, and that's written in Revelation 20. It says, uh, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But here, and here's why I came here. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Let us not, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so the whole point really is that we are children of the day and so forth. I'm not trying to make a whole lot of this or a whole lot out of this or, or confuse the situation because it says the day and the night here uh, when you have light that was created. But we will document that the sun and the moon did not come around until until the fourth day. So let's just move on here and 
see where it goes. Okay. So, uh, I, I read here and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it be, er, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now this firmament is an expanse. I believe it's probably, uh, what we would call the air or something atmosphere that we live in and what we have is a dividing of waters i personally believe this is you know basically creating clouds these clouds are essentially water so it's it's basically creating the cloud coverage and the jet stream and all that stuff i mean everything that is going to be used to to basically nourish the world here and um Anyway, let's move on here. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay, so now here's another thing. Well, how how would he call that heaven? Because heaven's like out in outer space or something like that. It's not. Basically, the atmosphere is often referred to as the heavens. We even read in Jeremiah chapter 4, about the destruction that all the birds of the heavens were fled. So we're, we're, it's no, it's no mystery here. We're just talking about the atmosphere that we live in, right? Okay. So in verse nine, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so, and God called the dry land earth. Okay, and basically terra firma, right? And gathered together the waters, uh, in the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So basically God separated land. He He caused the shorelines to appear and mountains and so forth. That would basically, um, it would, it would create a shoreline where the waters couldn't pass. It's written in, Proverbs chapter 8, that the waters couldn't pass his commandment. Well, you know what? It could be Psalms 104. Either place we'll talk about this event. But um, but I believe Proverbs chapter 8. Um, anyway, it's created the shorelines, created land. And God said, let the, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. So we have vegetation and the seed being created, I mean, it's not, it's not just for trees. I mean, it's all kinds of vegetation. It could be, could be used for food, right? Whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So we have fruit and vegetables that, we, you know, when you cut them open, the seed is inside the, the fruit or the vegetable to, so that you can replant it, right? Unless, of course, now we have a GMO seed that, doesn't have anything like that or something like that genetically modified, but that's another issue altogether. We're just talking about basic nature is what we have here. And so he brings forth vegetation across the world and across the earth, across the, you know, what I mean is across the land, the soil. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. All right, so we have the third day and only three days have passed, right? And now you could say this is 3,000 years, right? Because there is a case to be made because the day with the Lord concerning the creation is a thousand year period. So, and a thousand years is one day, Second Peter chapter 3. Anyway, so let's move on here. Uh, in verse 14, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So here you have the sun and the moon that is going to light the world. Now, this is sort of like a parallel because 
you could say that you have, um, you know, you have Jesus who's the light of the world, and then you have Satan as well, who is a lesser light. But he uh, he comes off as an angel of light, so it's a it's kind of a distinct parallel here too. In the stars, we already know are this is probably stars in the heaven like uh, that we see up in in the sky, but it parallels the children of heaven. Uh, I mentioned in Revelation twelve, just little food for thought there. Okay, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and, and then again. If they're, if they're, what is the light? It's, and this is just a, an afterthought, okay? It's not like I'm saying this is, this is not the sun and the moon, but I mean, the children of heaven in Christ, they bring light to the world, don't they? They're light bearers, and light is truth. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a parallel. Anyway, verse 18, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the night, the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And when I keep saying these parallels, basically God works this way. He these are examples as well that everything that's that was done is an example for us today. And so just as the sun b- delivers light to the world, to the children of the day, or to the the day, uh, Christ delivers light to the children of the day. So that's what I'm talking about with a parallel. Okay. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day, right? And God, let's move on. Day five. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven in the sky. But now I want to go in here. Let's just check out the strongs here because this word life is interesting oh you know what this is not what i was thinking thought this was nephesh but perhaps not it's che or k anyway um it means living or alive and uh, some people have hinted that this particular uh, day, day five here, could possibly have brought forth human life. Okay, that what I mean by that is there are, you know, we, we have in this world some people that have made their living on the water because this is the day of the water that we have here, right? Um. And so, you know, when you have Asian people and so forth, that maybe this could have been, now I'm not saying it it does, but some people have suggested that maybe the Asian race was created on this day. Just a little food for thought. (laughs) That's it. I'm not trying to say this is what I think or whatever. I just wanted to pass that on. Okay. So, um, and then of course he created the fowls of the, of the air that can, fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So we have basically the sea creatures and the and the fowls of the air, and for that matter, fowls of the, of the sea um, would be created as well. Uh, being created here on day five and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let foul and let foul multiply in the earth. Okay. In the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Okay. So moving on here, day six and God said, let, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. And this would be the land creature. Okay, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air 
and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Man is going to have dominion over that. Hang on, i got to close something that popped up here. All right. So God created man in his own image. In the image God of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now the word God here I think is Elohim. Let me just double check. Yeah, Elohim here. Now Elohim is as as opposed to Yah, um, and or you could say Yahweh or Yahweh. It's uh, Y H V H. Anyway, um, Elohim here is typically used, and you could do a study of this on your own, but it's typically used in the Bible of God and His creation. Just wanted to point that out. And we are talking about the creation here. So anyway, um, he created man, in, male and female, in his own image. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Now, I know some people will say, Oh, this replenish, see? The world was destroyed, and now they're replenishing it. And really, the word replenish, that's a nice try, but it's really not documentation. Okay, because that word just simply means to fill the earth. Okay, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. This is what you're going to live on. Okay, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So this is what all the beasts of the earth are going to feed on. Let me just double check this one here in 30. Wherein there is life, same word. All right. All right, and... um. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we have the six days of creation, and uh, some people say, yeah, it was literally six days. And maybe it was. I'm just, when I give you my opinion, um, it's only my opinion. It is my opinion that it was probably 6,000 years, and these things had to progress, you know, like from from the time it was created and the vegetation of the earth had to grow and then the, you know, the the uh, beasts of the sea had to be thrown in there too, you know, to populate and so forth. But anyway, be that as it may, it's no big deal, but it's just my opinion. So I'm going to go into Genesis 2-1 right now. We have everything created. Man was created, male and female, on the earth on day six told to replenish the earth. Now, Genesis 2, 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Now this word host here, I want to go into here. Saba, Hebrew 6635 in the Strong's. And this is going to be Let's go down to the Strong's definition here. Um, Saba, a mass of persons, uh, or figurative things, or whatever, uh, organized for war, so like it could be a military type thing, a campaign, literally or figuratively. Um, so basically, it's a it's a bunch of a bunch of things, a mass of things, right? I wanted to point that out because. Uh, we're going to, some of the discussion that we're going to discuss here is going to, it's going to be pertinent to it. So anyway, we're moving on here in verse two. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, if you're in, uh, you know, if you're one that believes that the earth was created in 6,000 years, then you would have to assume this is a, a millennium, this seventh day. And it's interesting because since the creation of Adam, we have basically uh, 6,000 years that have transpired. And 
we uh, some people believe that we are in the last generation and what's to come after that after this gener well after this age is going to be a thousand year reign of Christ where it's peace or you could say it's rest so it's sort of like the same type of sequence here but no big deal i just thought i'd throw that out there so and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made now these are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the lord god made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground well this is an interesting point now we saw that man was created on the sixth day so I don't know why it says here that there was not a man to till the ground except for maybe we're talking about the garden um, and it goes on here in verse six, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So this would be like a dew, the morning dew that you have, right? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now the question here is, is this a reflection of the sixth day or is this the day after rest? Is this the eighth day, you might say? Um, and I don't know. There's an argument to be made both ways. Now, people will say, well, you know, Adam and Eve, it, they were the first ones on earth because Eve was the mother of all living. But you have to consider as well that all living is Christ. She would be the mother of through Christ would come through that lineage, right? So it, that could simply mean that, right? Um, I personally think, and this I'm going to tell you this is my opinion. It It's not going to change. Whether you believe me or not, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change yours or my salvation or anything like that. It's simply an opinion that I've concluded, and you can take it, whatever you want, but I personally think the six day man was, uh, that all races were created on the sixth day and that, um, Adam and, uh, his wife were brought in after the day of rest, which would have been maybe the eighth day. And, but you can take it however you want. I mean, we had though in the very first chapter or verse of this chapter, all the hosts of heaven and earth were created, which is a mass of, of souls. So if it was only two souls, then why would they be referred to as a host, right? So it's just, I'm, I'm going to point these, I'm pointing these things out because it's important to make people think. That's important to me. I'm here to make you think. All right, and you can consider all these things. And I'm not telling you it's this way or that way. This I'm, I'll tell you, this is my opinion, but you have to make up your own mind what the truth is concerning this. All right, and I'm just giving you both sides of a of a coin, so that you are you're prepared to make your own decision. You know, a lot of pastors they won't give you both sides. They won't tell you. You know, some people think this, and some people think this. I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you, don't even believe me. Check it out for yourself. Make up your own mind. Okay, so we had man that was created here, and um, and it says, okay, so let me read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now we're talking specifically about the garden, which is why I say, well, maybe this is talking about there was not a man to till the garden. 
because this is we're going to have the creation of the garden here, and we have man that was here before even the plants, or seemingly anyway, because it says in verse 9, out of the ground, all the trees came and so forth, right? Or, sorry, it was, uh, yep, it was in verse 9 here. So, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Okay, so it split into four. And the name of the first is Pison, that is it which compass, compasseth the whole land of Havil, Havila, where there is gold. Okay, now some people say, well, it's we're talking about gold here. This is actually in Africa or something like that. I, I personally don't think so. All right? Um, we'll just keep on going. And, and there could be a case to be made for it, too. But we'll just read on here. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bdellium and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. See, now that is Ethiopia is in Africa, right? So there's an argument to be made that it's there. And the name of the third river is Hedekel. That is, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. Well, now we're not anywhere near Africa, right? So these rivers travel quite a long ways. And um, it goes on here. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So we know Euphrates cuts right through Iraq nowadays. Whether it was always that way, I don't know. But it covers this whole area, though, that is Middle Eastern, even down into... You know, the river would flow even down into Africa. So I don't know. You got to make up your mind on that. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So, and what he meant is to take care of it, to till it, to till the soil. He was the husband. It was husbandry, right? To be able to till the soil and, uh, and keep the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Okay. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right. Well, there's one thing to point out is that trees don't have knowledge of good and evil. So there's something specific about this tree that's different. We're not going to study it in this study. That might be the next one, though. Uh, but I just want to point that out. And the Lord God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. All right. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So now here's an interesting point. We have... Adam was created, and then you had all the trees and the vegetation of the garden that was created, and now you have all the animals created after man. Well, this is kind of different from the sequence of events in in the first chapter of Genesis, where you had man that was created last, now you have man being created first. So this is specific, really, to the garden, I believe. Okay, and uh, these animals are probably more... Uh, possibly domesticated animals, you know, whereas the other ones um, in the fifth day cre- or the sixth day creation would have uh, possibly been the wild beasts and so forth. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and every piece of the field, but for Adam there was not found in help meat for him. All right, so it, it reads here in Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Move this over here. Um, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Let's check this out here, and let's go into the rib here. Selah. 6763 of the Hebrew dictionary in the Strong's. And this would be um, a side rib beam, the rib of man, 
so forth. Um, oh, let me go down here. Strongs. Okay, a rib as curved, literally of the body or figuratively uh, of a door or a leaf or so forth. In other words, it was a curved appendage of some sort, right? And now, the reason I brought that up is because if you are familiar with anatomy or biology, maybe, um, you, you would uh, you would probably be aware that that uh, there is a part of the DNA of a woman that is different from man, and they have what is known as the helix curve. Man doesn't have it. So may, uh, just a little food for thought, but was this the curve or the rib that was taken from man and suddenly he created woman, which woman is basically a man with a womb, womb man, and that's where all life would come through her womb, right? So... Um, Anyway, but I thought it was kind of interesting, the rib and uh, being a curved uh, appendage of sorts. It might Maybe it was the helix curve that was taken from men. Just a little more food for thought anyway. So, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. There you have it. Woman. Anyway, therefore... Shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now, I want to point out a couple things and just some thoughts, really, because I'm not going to this, I'm not going to really go on much longer in this particular um, study here. But I do want to point out, and maybe I'll read a little bit of, of the third chapter here to make the make the point because we we have in the third chapter the serpent um you know and i'm not going to go into chapter three uh because that's that's just going to open up another can of worms for another study that could be an easy hour right there the point i wanted to make out is that some people believe that all souls came they come or came directly from like their direct lineage from Adam and Eve like they were the first people on earth and that from them came everything after right and um but I, there's a couple of thoughts on this right now uh, other people will think that they weren't the first people on earth they were simply the first the first in this lineage that Christ would come through the first of this particular family and that the races and so forth were created on the sixth day. That's personally what I think, but you have to make up your mind on it. But here's the thing. If they, if they were all, and these are questions that I have for the Christian, my Christian brethren that do believe that, um, that all souls came from Adam and Eve. Okay. You would have to conclude that there was, incestuous affairs that took place for them to be able to reproduce. And what I mean by that, and maybe and I'm bringing it up because a lot of people don't ever actually really think of this, but like if Adam and Eve, they had children, right? They had Abel, he was killed by Cain, but then they had Seth and so forth. Um, and maybe they had other children, it's not written that they did, but maybe they had daughters and so forth. But you would have to think that if they all came from this family, that there had to be some sort of sibling incestuous, you know, uh, activity going on. And I would think, well, if that is, if that is how it was, then why is it forbidden? And not that I, I don't think it should be or anything like that. I do think it should be because it's not a good thing, but why was it okay here and not, it's not okay later. And I've heard people say, well, you know, the law wasn't created by that time. Right. And so it wasn't forbidden at the time of Adam and Eve because the law wasn't, ha had not been created. But then I would ask you as well, they had in, if you're familiar with the flood of Noah and so forth, you have ham that saw the nakedness of his father. In fact, I'm going to go there. Genesis 
Genesis 9, 22. I have it ready right here. Okay, and this is, so this is during the, the flood or after whatever. It says in Ham, now he, he had three children, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, right? And it says in Ham, the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. So he told Shem and Japheth about it. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. All right, so, uh, and it says, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. All right, so I want to point out something here. It wasn't that Noah was drunk and naked laying out there, and these guys saw him. It was, this is much different it basically you had ham that had relations with noah's wife and i'm going to document that here and um and it's in right here in leviticus chapter 18 the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover she is thy mother thou shalt not uncover her nakedness the nakedness of thy father's wife Shall thou not shall thou not uncover? It is thy father's nakedness. So we know that this is Noah's Noah's wife. May not be Ham's mother. Um maybe she maybe this is a stepmother or something. I don't know. But he saw her naked. All right. Why did he see her naked? And then why would why would Noah curse? Canaan, Ham's child, except that maybe Canaan came from Noah's wife. Don't know that for a fact, but I just wanted to point that out. The nakedness of thy father is looking upon or possibly having something to do with the nakedness of his wife. (laughs) So now the thing is, uh, the point I brought this up is the law was not created at this time. Okay, this Levitical law in Leviticus 18 came way later. You know, when they were, when the, when all of these, they were walking the wilderness after the exodus in Egypt, right? So we know that that law was created then, or it was penned then, but it had to have existed at this time. So if it's, if it was forbidden as part of the law here, then how could you say that it was okay to have incestuous relations back with Adam and Eve and their children and so forth? All right. It's just a little food for thought. And I guess what what I'm trying to do is I'm making the argument here that, that perhaps there were others on the earth. It's just that these, you know, Adam and Eve were in the garden. And so forth, but you have to you have to think. Okay, where did Seth get his wife? Well, even Cain. It says Cain himself went to the land of dwelt in the land of Nod, he and his wife. So where where did she come from? Was it his sister, or was she from the land of Nod, or was she part of the six day creation? You know, of all races and so forth. I don't know. These are just things that I think about, and I'm bringing them up to cause you to think about. Uh, but this is it. This is the foundation of the the age of flesh. And um, I believe it's, uh, I believe this age was brought into play as a result of what occurred in the world that was. So, so what we had was the destruction of everything after the rebellion back then. And then we have everyone going, and this is another point, I'm going to bring this up here. If, if it was commanded that all souls had to come through the flesh, being born of woman, innocent, um, well, let's go back here in Genesis 1, 26, where God says, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Who's he talking to? Some people say, well, he's, he's talking to the Holy Spirit 
and Jesus. You know, the Trinity. That's not written. I mean, that's just, it's a, you know, why would he be, first of all, does the Holy Spirit have a likeness of man? No. It's the Spirit of God. So why would he be saying, let us make man in our image? So I'm going to throw this at you. If it was given that all souls come through the flesh after that rebellion of of uh, Lucifer in the world that was, do you think it's possible that maybe God here was talking to the angels, talking to all souls that were going to come through flesh? Saying here, Joe, we're going to make one in you, your image. We're going to make one in, in uh, you know, Mary's image. We're going to make one here. You know what I mean? So, like, all souls had to come through the flesh. But and if you wonder what you look like, you look like this is your spiritual body. It's just that you're in a flesh body right now. That's just, again, a little food for thought. I don't, this is my opinion or my thoughts, really. I'm not saying that's exactly how things played out but it's something for you to chew on. Was God talking to the angels, to the hosts of heaven, saying that you are all going through the flesh? Get ready. I don't know. Anyway, that's about it for this study here. We're going to pick it up. I don't know what the next one's going to be. There's a lot of topics I'd love to love to cover, but I do need to get through some basic foundation of what's going on here, especially in the, in the, uh, up, upcoming chapters here in Genesis, <laughs> you know, the whole garden and what was going on in there needs to come out. And, um, we're going to discuss that. I don't know if it'll be next, but maybe it will. So the age of flesh people, there you go. That's it. I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in. If you made it this far, you're still listening. So I do appreciate that. I would really appreciate it if you would share these videos with others and and leave a comment too. I mean, the only way this is really going to grow, you know, as far as bringing God's word forth on this avenue is if people share it. So share it through your social media avenues and so forth. And, um, you know, give me a like if you like it. And if you didn't, go ahead and give me a thumbs down or just keep that opinion to yourself. That's okay. <laughs> but... I would love to hear your comments. If you have, um, if you question anything I'm saying here, you know, throw a question in the comment and let's talk it over. So other than that, until the next study, people I want to thank you all again for, um, for being here. Father, we, we want to thank you for the study. And we ask, um, that if there are seeds planted here, that you protect those seeds, Father, and bring your children to water it further. More importantly, or most importantly, that all, anything that is learned through these, these videos is that it's your truth. It's not my words, unless I tell you it's my, them it's my words, but Father, that it's really the Holy Spirit that speaks here. And so we want to thank you for the opportunity. We give you the praise for all this. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. All right, gang, that's it. The Age of Flesh. We'll talk to you later in the next video. See ya.